us to ignorance and confusion. Three men arose from humble beginnings with a message of wisdom and hope for their troubled times. Three men who would eventually change the very face of humanity. But they blocked us on Facebook. So, here are some other guys. It's Song Talk Radio with Michael, Neil, Phil, and the gang. Welcome to Song Talk Radio. This is episode 269. This is the show with songwriters talking to other songwriters about the craft of songwriting. We share tips, tools, and techniques, and together we all become better at writing songs. Go figure. Good deal. I'm your host, Neil Modi, and joining with me are the medieval members of the Song Talk Radio <laughs> action team. We got uh, Feudal Phil. <laughs> I am here with sword in hand. Or Good. sword in hand. And, is it uh, sword we got... or sword? I don't know. What? Is it sword or sword? Sword. Yes. A sword? So do I. <laughs> Why do have a W on it? <laughs> There's a lot of wasted letters in English words. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Don't, don't question it. Just <laughs> go with it. And uh, we got Mercenary Phil, uh, Mer Mercenary Michael, sorry. Uh, I will show mercy this time. <laughs> mercenary. <laughs> but I will still show mercy. Merc <laughs> mercenaries don't show mercy. What is but that? But I will give receipts. You give receipts. <laughs> <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll kill you, but you know, you can write it off at tax time. Exactly. So, you know, it kind of works out. Yeah, yeah. I'm not <laughs> cruel. <laughs> <laughs> it's all business, right? Exactly. It's not personal. <laughs> and on social media tonight, we have Rampart Rita. Hey. hey. Rita says hi. She Rita doesn't have a microphone hi. right yeah. now. And finally on the tech board, it's Mealy Weapon Micah. Hello. What's up? <laughs> I, I do have a mic. Yes. yes it's Micah. I'm the Micah. During the show, send in your comments and questions to at Song Talk Radio on Twitter or Facebook, or email feedback at songtalk.ca, and we'll share them with the audience. You're going to want that email tonight. Oh, it's a trust yeah, me. It's going to be exciting. We got something coming up. Yep. And please visit us at songtalk.ca and find out how you can be a guest on the show. With us tonight is Kelsey Vaz. Kelsey Vaz is a 24-year-old R&B singer-songwriter from on, from Ottawa, based in Toronto. She started making music at the age of seven, replacing karaoke. Uh, songs with her own words. In 2017, she released her first single called Focus, followed by four more songs, including Put You On in 2018. Her singles have been heard on Flow 93.5, Toronto Takeover, and Spotify playlists like Viral Hits Canada and New Music Fridays. Nice. Kelsey draws inspiration from the likes of Stevie Wonder, Brandy, and Beyonce, mixing sultry R&B with the energy of pop and the bounce of hip-hop. Her most recent achievements have been performing with Daniel Caesar in his choir for the Freudian Tour, headlining a sold-out show at PPL Nightclub in Ottawa, writing top four and top 100 songs in the CBC Searchlight competition, and competing in Honey Jam, and recently graduating from the Remix program. Kelsey is currently working on her EP Rogue, which is due to release in August 2019. Welcome to Song Talk Radio, Kelsey! Yay! Yay! Right. Thank you for having me! Thanks for being me. here. Yeah. yeah, and we have a little bit of news tonight, don't we? Oh boy, do we have news! Really exciting. We have a special contest. Yes. All about? You looking at me? Well, somebody should say it. Uh, well, there's an upcoming movie, biopic on Elton John called Rocket Man, starring Taron Egerton. And the nice folks at Paramount Pictures have given us a couple of tickets to give away and some posters. So yes. at the end of the show, we're going to give you an email address. And we want you to send us a note. And we will randomly draw um, a name from all the emails we get. And you'll win a ticket. You'll win two tickets, two tickets to go see uh, an advanced screening of Rocket Man. May 29th? On May 29th. On May 29th. Yeah, that's at the Scotiabank Theatre. In Bank Toronto. Theater. Yeah, so, downtown Toronto, uh, Scotiabank Theatre. I know we have a lot of fans and listeners overseas. I'm afraid we can't help you unless you can get here in time. Yeah, or you could always email us and, and tell us your friend's name in Toronto. That would work. Yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and include a 500-word essay about why Elton John is awesome. <laughs> yes, and then after, I think, after the, um, this, uh, towards the end of the month, I think we're going to be doing um, a special show on Yeah, on uh, I think it's June 20th, it. where we're going to do a whole show talking about it and, and yeah. the reception it got and what we think of it and, uh, and Elton John in general, I suppose. Yes. Right and, you know, he really should stop by because he lives, he lives here, so... You know. One of his homes, yeah. yeah One well, of his houses is we'll, here. We'll, we'll yeah. put out the invite now and <laughs> we'll yeah, see no. what happens. <laughs> so okay. Mr. Mr. Elton John or Reginald, I think his name is Reggie, actually. Uh, oh. yes. We'll find we'll out. Find we'll out find out in the movie, movie. right. <laughs> okay, so Kelsey, hey. you've been writing since the age of seven. Yeah, for a Elton while. Elton John didn't start to his like 10 or 12, so <laughs> yes. he's 
Compared to you, a bit of a slacker. Uh (laughs) (laughs) No shade, Elton John. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I've been I've been writing music for as long as I can remember, to be honest. So yeah. So did you did you start on piano or? Um, or? I started just singing. Um, I I've been singing for a long time. My mom and my aunt got me into singing. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that um, that one little cartoon with a mouse, but it it was Sheila Ray the Brave. No, nothing. Sheila Ray the Brave. Sheila Ray the Brave. No. no. Well, it was like this little cartoon <laughs> back in the day, and I memorized a song, and like my mom had me singing that like for every guest that came into our house. Oh. Like she's like, "All right, Kelsey, come on, get up there," and just I had to kill it. So from then, oh yeah, they've just been encouraging me. And then as soon as I got older, I started learning how to write music and mm-hmm. the karaoke songs. It's like I would download back in like the LimeWire days. Like yes. I would download. Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> I would download. Um, karaoke versions of like any song because I just wanted an instrumental and if I didn't know the song I'm like okay well I'll just write my own words to it you know so huh? that's cool. a good idea oh, for wow. songwriting yeah yeah, yeah. That'd be a good I tip. definitely recommend yeah, yeah. it yeah, that's a good way to, so good, that's an excellent way to develop uh, your melody skills for sure yeah, yeah. Right. exactly because I mean the the backup vocals were already there you know so yeah, it just yeah. kind of helped me it had a, it was like a template for me to kind of learn from mm. when did you did you decide to actually sort of make songwriting a thing um it's it's always um, it's always been a thing uh, just to get I guess a little bit more personal so my mom ended up passing away to cancer um, mm-hmm. back in 2001 um, mm-hmm. and then from there like songwriting and music just became more of like a, an escape for me uh, my dad got me a keyboard when I was about like 12 well like 11 12 and so from there I was like all right well now I can start composing music and just start learning as I go um, I don't know if YouTube was around at the time but I was already just like fiddling with the keys and learning words to that so eventually it just became more of like a oh, okay I have this kind of melody down cool what words can I pair with it and then I was able to draw some emotions and sing along mm-hmm. to it so I guess that's how it all kind of came together uh, until I was around 14 me and my brother made an R&B duo where we had recording equipment in our basement and I was like all right well now I'm gonna start writing songs to record them because I can listen to them back finally so all right yeah right, that's right. kind of how it came about so well, when did you start performing I started performing young. Uh, I was like in every single talent show from the time I was in elementary school. <laughs> yeah, every single talent show. Uh, same with high school. I was in dance troupe and in all of the spirit assemblies and everything. I, I always looked for every opportunity I could to perform. Um, I guess creating music came, I guess, secondary after. I just liked performing in front of people. It became like my, my vice. Yeah. Yeah. So what, honestly, what's, what, what's your process now? Do you do you do you start with some chords and stuff, or do you go to lyric first, or does it kind of is it either or both? Um, right now, my songwriting style is definitely different. I've I've been songwriting, I guess, for a while. I'm 24 now, so um, I've I've had the chance to work with a lot of cool people. And uh, since I started writing with my brother too at a young age, we developed a way to songwrite. First, we we started with uh, just listening to a beat that was sent to us or a beat that we made, um, and then we would try to make music that would uh, pair up well with the beat. Um, so that's that's my main way of songwriting. I like to draw inspiration from the production and the music that I'm hearing. Mm-hmm. Um, but there has been moments where I've been able to just write out a song if I'm like really emotional in that place or if I have something that's really heavy on my mind, I'm able just to write a song and then eventually find music that'll suit it or somehow a beat will come in that'll fit perfectly with the song that I just wrote. So okay. it just depends, I guess, on what the mood is, who I'm working with. So do, do you actually keep like uh, sketches filed away somewhere, like ly- lyric snippets or little oh, yeah. little beats and things? Oh, yeah. Like, like my little... Google Drive is like really messy, <laughs> 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 to be honest. My old computer, my old cell phone, like everything that I had that was uh, that allowed me to, to write music. Like I would back in the day, like when I had my... Um, like I would have a black, the Blackberry was my favorite thing to write music on because I was able to like, you know, to and from school on my bus rides. That was mm. my favorite place to write music. Yeah. So I would just be sitting down while looking outside, you know, watching people pass me and then just ideas would flow. So I just start writing them down and I have like a whole archive in my phone or in my computer. Mm-hmm. So if I ever listen to a production that I don't, I can't draw a certain inspiration from at first, then I'll usually just start scrolling through some ideas that I had in the past. Like I'm a uh, huge yeah. believer in recycling lyrics, yeah, yeah. you know, 
because they're real words, they're real emotions. It just doesn't have a home yet. Yeah, so. I, I think I, I get the impression a lot of people don't necessarily do that. Like they have the idea, but they don't take the time to actually record down at least something. You know, yeah. get a little something down. You can, but then, but then the key after that is, yeah, be able. Be, you don't forget about it. That you revisit it later on, or say, hey, something I did six months ago might fit with this beat that I just heard. Oh my God, yeah. It's yeah. funny because like to that point, yes, it is so important for you to not only write down your ideas but like to actually like make a voice note of it and sing it how you envision the melody yeah. sing everything because i mean there's top line and then there's actually the lyrics right if you mm -hmm. don't remember your top line i feel like to me as a songwriter the top line is the most important mm -hmm. uh, element to your song mm -hmm. so like I'll, li I'll literally be in sessions i'll think of a really really crazy top line if i don't record it i'll be in the studio like in the booth and I will I'm I don't know what I'm singing I don't know what the melody mm -hmm. I have the words I just can't remember the melody so mm -hmm. that's such you, a you good ever point. come up with with top line melody only like la la la's or yeah. mm -hmm, and then attach a lyric to it after the fact all the time yeah okay. um back in the day when me and my brother were really making music and honestly when I was just more actively in the studio cuz we had a home studio that we built um one of our favorite things to do was just to go on a, like play a beat jump into the booth and just start singing some gibberish like literally mm -hmm. na 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 but uh, but 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 like you need to get like the syllables down and mm -hmm. and the notes down for a good top line, so it doesn't matter if it's actual words or gibberish. Just mm -hmm. for listeners who might not uh, understand, so what can you explain what a top line is and beats and how that because that's a more modern way of songwriting. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um. So uh, I guess my understanding of a top line is it's like your hook melody. So um, mm -hmm. what's really drawing people in. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be the the hook itself, um, but just like a melody that really pulls people in, that that sets the basis of the song. Um, yeah, and I, I really do like top lining. Um, it's easier for me because again, it doesn't necessarily have to be the lyrics. You just can sing some gibberish, and as long as it flows nicely onto the onto the production on the beat, then then you can add lyrics later. So I, I hope that explains that yeah. <laughs> top yeah, line. Yeah. And then lyrics, of course, are just the song it's words. It's not the entire vocal melody, yeah. but it's the, the hooky, the catchy part. The hack, the, wow, well, hacky part, the, the hack catchy hack part. part. <laughs> the, hacky. the hacky part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but do, you, do you ever go back and forth? Like, because you guys are, like you say, you're, you're, your brother does the beats or? Yeah, so um, uh, just, I guess, to take a step back. So my, uh, when we started making music, we made an R&B duo called Retro Future back in Ottawa. Shout out to our team, Retro. Um, <laughs> but. Um, um, we used to make like R&B and soul music and it was really heavily inspired by 90s R&B. So a lot of our top lines were actually like drawn from old R&B songs that we li used to listen to like from Flowetry and like Michael Jackson and you know Brandy, SWV, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, yeah. Um, and he he's also a songwriter and a singer. He's actually mm -hmm. based out in LA. He goes by mm -hmm. Maurice Moore right now. Oh. Um, yeah. So back in the day, that's kind of how we used to get our songwriting going. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about going down to LA as well? Did I you went know? there to visit him last year. Um, I'm overdue for a trip this year, to be honest with you. But it was an amazing trip. Like LA is a whole another world. That's yeah. just like as soon as you touch down, you feel the humidity of the hot air. You see like the palm trees and everything. And like, okay, well, I'm not home. Um, this is. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I definitely have to go back though. Well, I was just wondering about like the process. Like, so if you if you get a if you get a a, a beat from somebody, mm -hmm. even if it's another producer or your brother or whoever, mm -hmm. and then you uh, write a top line for it, is there ever an instance where your top line you 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 you're insisting on a certain direction for the top line, mm -hmm. and that may necessitate changing the beat, or is the beat sort of locked in place, and you have to work to to it? Um, I usually don't like locking anything in place while I'm songwriting and creating just because I feel like everything has to marry together at the end of the day. Um, I don't know. I'm just I've just been a strong believer in making sure that the lyrics and the and the melody really, really fit well within the beat, whether or not the beat needs some extra changes after the top line is established. That's only really going to enhance the song. Yeah. Um, so in a lot of cases, it's usually like a back and forth situation where I'll get a beat, I'll write a top line or um, a hook to it or an entire song to it. And then we'll just start, you know, going back and forth on where we see the song going and uh, what needs to be done. I like to work closely with producers when it comes to that, because, again, 
the song it's about the song it's not about me or anything so mm-hmm. we just want to make sure we have the best possible can we be a bit more specific about actually how that works so yeah, sure. does he send you like uh, an mp3 of the, of the of the song or what does this person send you um so uh in a lot of cases with producers they'll usually just send me uh either a beat pack or uh, a beat pack, a beat pack. It, that's pretty much just a folder of a bunch of beats that they've made that may or may not fit with my sound but it's just some experimental stuff that i okay that they might think would suit me and my voice so like so mp3s they, type of thing? yep so they, 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 they haven't put wave. these beats in any kind of sequence or anything like that the, um not necessarily it's just literally a package of beats oh. that they send you and just it's go like go through see if something clicks exactly and exactly and it's better if they give you a variety so that you know you have something to work with and something to mm. some how feedback long to are you, how long is each one um well i mean they're about the they're about the 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 length of an actual song. Like they okay. they they send pretty structured beats. Like they have an idea of where they want the verse, the hook, the bridge, the hook at the end to be, and everything. Okay. It's it's your pretty basic template of again, like I said, right. verse, hook, verse, hook, bridge, hook, finish. Right. So that's kind of how I work with that. Um, they're about like three minutes, three four minutes, and okay. um, yeah. And then I would just listen to them, listen through them, see if any inspiration comes at first listen and then if it does then I'll just start writing to it and uh, find time to write either record a voice note to the to the beat and send the idea to them and see if they're down with that right. um, or yeah I'll just let them know if it doesn't work for me then you know then that's just another conversation like hey you know this is not really my vibe but let me know if you have something along these lines and are, yeah, are, are, you ever, are you ever really specific about like you got the you got the verse part here but I need it to be you know two measures longer or shorter or I need two verses before I get to the hook or I mm-hmm. you know you depending on how you're writing your lyric or whatever do you ever go back to the producer with like really specific notes like that yes I do do sometimes it depends on uh, the relationship that I have with the producer if it's somebody that's like that I don't really work with often or they're either in another country or we're not able to meet up then um, I'll usually have them send me the beat stems to it and then I'll just work with either a songwriter or the engineer on my end to rearrange the song in a way that suits the lyrics that I've written out uh-huh. the layout that I've kind of put in place and then we'll just make sure that the production matches the my idea um, but I usually let the no not usually I, I always let the producer know if um, if there's any changes like that that's gonna be done because I mean it's their work yeah too, of course, of course. you know so um, I like to make sure that the communication is, is clear with the people that I work with um, and then if there is some changes that I need on the production side I like to communicate that as well but um, also make sure that I have like that flexibility by getting the stems from them so that I can, you know, play around with it, fiddle around with it. Maybe I might have an idea or I can get a, a, an even bigger idea out of messing around with it. So it really is just workshopping it to make sure we have the best, the best right. piece of work, right? I've, I've, someone asked me to, uh, to ask you this. <clears throat> They're a songwriter, but they, you know, they, they do maybe a more traditional thing with a band, you know, and mm-hmm. everyone gets together and makes noise and, and, and so on. So how does the, how do you work out the the songwriting like royalty splits with this kind of thing? Um, when it comes to the songwriting royalties, um, I mean, as a songwriter, I get like the well on so can it's known as like the author composer um, breakdown. So the producer would get the composer end of it and I would get the author end of it. So that's just all in publishing. Oh, okay. mm. um, but then there's the master. So if it if I'm if I'm releasing the song under my name, then that's a conversation I have with the producer. Um, usually it's just a 50-50 split down the middle between yeah. like the, the pub yeah. and the master and all that. But I, that's also still in a conversation to have with the people that you're working with. Do you have like a contract that you sign at the first or? Um, no, it's usually just in communication when it comes down to like the actual release of the song. When every, you know, because it, it has to go through either like um, tune core or uh, what is, there's another one like CD baby distro kid Discord, you yeah, know yeah. like there there's um, certain platforms that you need to register the song in before it even goes live so once it gets to that point that's when you should I mean before it gets to that point that's like yeah. the step before really mm. that you should really be you know figuring out the paperwork for all of your songs and making sure that whoever's a part of it is being 
you know, credited accordingly and paid mm. accordingly to. Well, right. a, lot, a lot of people say it's even before that. Like when you even start the collaboration, you should be clear about who's getting what. Yeah, I usually like to. Is. Sorry, go yeah. on. Yeah, or, 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 what the, or what the split is up front. And I suppose it could change after that. And I suppose Absolutely. it depends on the relationship you have, how long yeah. you've been working with them. Exactly. You brought in a couple of songs, I right? I did. I did. So, how, Focus was an earlier release? Yes. So, Focus. How did that come together? And then we'll take a listen. No problem. Um, Focus was released at this point like two years ago. We're in 2019. So, it was released um, in 2017, June 1st. So, yeah. And, and this one you wrote um, with your brother. Exactly two years ago. Yeah, exactly. Whoa, the song is two years old. Um, this is the one you wrote with your brother? That's the one I wrote with my brother, yes. Cool. Um, we wrote that in Ottawa. It was recorded and written in Ottawa. Um, that was kind of like my breakout song. I wanted mm -hmm. a nice, fun, poppy song to, to release just to show mm -hmm. people my chops, what I'm about and everything, and just to have something out there for people to enjoy. Right. Is there anything in particular to listen to with it? Um, when people listen, like for like a, a song running or a, a bridge or a hook or anything that you like, really uh, would like to draw attention to, or that you really thought, oh, that worked great. Take a listen mm, to that. Um, this song is special because even though it's like your pop R and B, I find that as soon as something kind of goes towards the pop world, um, it's just you should be a little bit more conscious and intentional with with uh, just the type of musicality that you have, like how much ad-libs, runs, stuff like that. Like I'm really into R&B, so I mean, there, there's harmonies and runs all over the place with R&B and it's just so mm -hmm. beautiful. But with pop, it's just a different story. So what I love about this song is that I'm still kind of, I'm still hitting those harmonies and uh, there's a lot of attitude to it. Um, there's, I have like a flow to it too, um, I guess. I don't know, it's kind of like your female empowerment song. All right. So, uh, well, uh, let's, yeah. let's take a listen, the focus. You got a lie, I'm so to I May let's fly, yeah, we got life And I might teach about real love Trying to make it out alive Them dollar signs ain't gonna treat me right So if you're trying to make it out alive I should never have to tell you
Okay, that was Focus by Kelsey Vaz and Maurice Moore. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And Maurice track. Moore is your brother. Maurice Moore is my bro. Oh, right, right. Yeah. So there's a bit of work done in Ottawa, but the production or the engineering was done elsewhere in the world, you were saying? Yes. So uh, the pro producers of this project are Chris, KRS, and King Benjamin. Uh, they are producers based out of Jamaica. And oh. um, yeah, they're they're very very dope. Uh, we found them off of SoundCloud. So, so ever what since what did they bring? So what was it before and what was it after they got their hands on it? Um, so they actually sent me the beat. They sent me a whole bunch of beats beats like I was uh, talking about earlier. Um, they sent me a beat pack, and uh, there was a couple of them that I just that just stuck out to me, and and I showed it to my brother. I was like, yo, these are the ones that I want to work on, and so then we just started, you know, at. So you, you you guys had you guys had done your own beat and and sent it to them or no so um, uh, I ended up drawing the inspiration for focus after I had heard the beat from uh, Chris oh, okay so he sent it to me and then we um, then we ended up writing to it after that and recording the idea and oh, okay that's so how it so came about. What, what what was the collaboration between you and and Maurice then uh, Maurice was helping me write the song the lyrics and the yes. and the hooks yes uh, okay. Yes. And cool. he also, uh, yeah, he just helped me write it and just get all the ideas out. And he also helped me uh, arrange the vocals, like the harmonies and everything that you hear uh, in the background okay. there. Cool. Yeah. So just have a, an, uh, another ear, another set ear. of ears to bounce ideas Exactly, off. exactly. But you guys wrote the lyric together. Sorry? You, you wrote the lyric together or was the exactly. lyric largely yours? Um, it was... It, it was a collaborative effort, yeah. It was, yeah, because we, the way that we work, honestly, is we'll literally be in the studio for hours at a time just bouncing ideas off of each other and write together on, like, the same document and record the song together. Everything is very collaborative with me and him just because, I don't know, I feel like when you're working with another creative that understands yeah. you and your creative flow, it just, uh, yeah. It just becomes it more of a collaborative. Builds better. Exactly. I like the uh, financially stable pay for my cable. Line. Yeah. Thank you. Very real world. <laughs> Remind me a bit of uh, SZA. She is really yeah. nice. You know, uh, girl next door, kind of a real life uh, mm -hmm. happening events in her in her lyrics. So yeah, I thought that yeah. was really cool. Thank you. What do well, you think, Phil? Well, it's 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 such an interesting song. You know, the verses are so. You know they're so light they're almost barely there and then you have like the, you know the the chorus which is a little bit bit stronger mm -hmm. um but the verses like they would like they're just so light you know it's almost just like sound and then almost just scatting over it it's a really interesting yeah effect. they're kind of meandering and and a little bit looser yes right and then the hook really brings it down mm -hmm. the ground yeah. level. Mm -hmm. right? yeah which is interesting which is interesting and they kind of went um all the way through it's it's a very there's a very specific specific style of music now um, where the bass drum is is very irregular all the way through it's not like dum 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 mm -hmm. or you know back in the in the early days of hip hop where they they would loop something so you'd have the bass drum you know really repetitive dreams where they're like the the drums are just they're so broken now it's yeah. so interesting I, and i don't i can't even imagine how you actually program that oh that's awesome you know speaking of programming we'll be right back after these program messages. Nicely done, yep. Yeah. Segway. Nice. And we're back. For those of uh, you just joining us, you're listening to Song Talk Radio, streaming on songtalk.ca. And tonight our guest is Kelsey Vaz. Yay. Hey. <laughs> and don't forget, we'd love to hear from you even during the show. So, you know, uh, email us and, and Twitter us and, you know, uh, but, oh, this is a particularly good week for you to be tuning in because uh, stay tuned right to the end of the show because we have a contest. We're going to give away a pair of tickets to the upcoming feature film uh, Elton John biopic Rocket Man, starring yes. Tyron Edgerton. Thank you to our friends at Paramount Pictures. Some other so, swag, too, I think, aren't we? And, and some posters. Some posters. Uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, um, but, yeah, it's supposed to be a, a fantastic film, so uh, we're all looking really forward to one seeing One thing we it. haven't mentioned is that we will actually be at that very same screening with these people. That's true. So even that, although that's true, you should still enter. <laughs> yeah, don't let that Despite discourage that. you. I think Phil, that's what Phil is saying. So, uh, so that yeah, so that's uh, that's a pair of tickets we're giving away uh, at the end of the show. We're going to give you an ad, uh, an email address. So drop us a note, and uh, you'll be put in. Uh, for a random draw, so you could win that. Yes, and cool. and or some posters. Um, so do that, please. Um, so as well, tweet your thoughts and your questions to us at Song Talk Radio, or send uh, us an email at feedback at songtalkradio.ca, and we'll share your questions here on the show. 
By the way, that's not the email that we're going to give you for the Elton John movie. It's a special email. It's a Very special, special Elton Top Johnny it's, kind it's of It's envelope uh, email. sealed. Yeah. And only for people who listen to the show or yeah. the podcast. That's right. We don't, we're not going to mention it anywhere else. Just like for uh, the, the grocery store or on the way home on the subway or anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, coming up soon on Song Talk Radio on May 28th, Matthew Reed, who is a uh, classically trained composer who's composed for theater, film, television, and games. He was the music director for, I think, two decades for Second City, and he yeah. recently oh, uh, uh, created a, a piece that was performed at Roy Thompson Hall. Cool. So, uh, And he's a very funny guy, too, so looking forward to seeing Matthew. And then on June 4th, we have a special episode on Song Talk Radio, Song Talk Writing for Beginners. So there'll be lots of useful tips there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so keep on listening, but most importantly, stay tuned now and listen to us as we talk more to Kelsey Vaz. Yes. <laughs> right on. So, so I want to find out what you do with this um, after you've recorded it. Are you, like, how, uh, what is your outreach? Um, um, after, after I've recorded... Um, what do you mean once the song is released? Or? Yeah, like are you... Um, How do you get people to listen to you? Are you like sending it out to labels? Are you sending it out to... Are you just releasing it online? Community or radio? TVs or... Yeah. Um, well, before I would like to just um, release it online just for my audience on SoundCloud because... Uh, Somehow, my following on SoundCloud just grew, um, and so that was how I just, you know, just kept releasing stuff, um, and I naturally had a really good reaction to the songs I had put out. Um, stri- putting the songs out on streaming platforms is a little bit different. Um, it just requires a little bit more marketing behind it, so now I'm just a little bit, um, I'm more conscious now with releasing my music after it's recorded. Um, I'm currently building up uh, some social momentum by just posting more consistent um, interactions with my audience, um, trying to get the engagement up, uh, and then I'll start dropping announcements like my song's coming out now and or soon. You know, mm-hmm. repost, share, hashtag, all that stuff. Um, and then once it's ready, and you know, after I've gotten a few other things kind of in the mix too, like uh, other you know media appearances, let's say, or just other social strategies that I can use, then you know, release. Hopefully. The numbers will show it, but really and truly, um, I like releasing music uh, kind of off the radar, just because of the the genuine response that I that I get from a lot of the people that that have been listening for a while. You doing this all by yourself, or you got your crew? You got your uh, your posse doing it for you? Or um, no? well, <laughs> a team of dedicated, <laughs> team of dedicated <laughs> professionals. Um, I am a student to this, so I'm doing this all myself, but I've been working with a lot of really, really great people that have helped me in different areas, like songwriting, like production, like understanding, you know, song arrangement. No, um, in terms of the, in terms of the marketing and the... And in terms of the marketing, too. I am yeah. working with a few photographers and people uh-huh. on the branding side, too, just to help me with those areas. Um, I did go to school for marketing, but I mean, sometimes, like, learn, like marketing yourself is, like, one of the difficult hardest, things to hardest do. Hardest own yeah. bio. <laughs> you know? way harder than writing someone else's right exactly and so i'm i'm learning as i go but um the other the extra help has been very very good when you, you m- say the streaming uh getting music on the streaming services is difficult you mean just standing out it's not because there's so much yeah out there. yeah standing out i feel like back in the soundcloud days um it was a little bit easier just to put it out there and kind of just hope for the best you know um now when it comes to streaming there's a lot more to it, like trying to get on a good playlist and um, just, you know, when you first launch, like that's really that, that hot period where you want people to be sharing your stuff and talking about it just to get the numbers and the engagement up. Um, so when you're putting things on like platforms that are going to monetize your music, I feel like the stakes are a little bit higher to have a little bit more preparation behind behind your release. Do you try to get placement on uh, TV shows and movies? Because your music sounds quite good for that thank you very much um i am trying to get that done um i think it's just a matter of you know who's in your network and and how you can get those things going uh but it is still in the works all of those things in the works i'm trying to get syncing and licensings and all that but in time yeah <laughs> in time. so when you say like you're value. trying to get uh, build up the engagement with uh, your social media how yes. are you actually specifically doing that um, building up the engagement would be like, you know, interacting with my fans through the comments or fans, my audience, my, my lovely supporters and family and friends. <laughs> They're fans. They're fans. <laughs> They're yeah. fans. Like the little but, um, people? <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs> um, the best people in the world. Yeah, like, really? come on. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just a matter of, you know, like 
keeping up with that conversation. And to me, it's more than just, you know, answering back to them. It's like I, I really am trying to build a relationship with the people that are listening to my music because in a lot of ways um, and in a lot of my songs too, like I, I touch a lot of personal points and share a lot of personal stories that I'd love to hear how it affected somebody else. I'd love to hear if it helps somebody. So starting conversations like that, engaging with your fans and being honest with them um, and, you know, accepting that honesty back has been a really good way of getting that engagement going. Um, the hashtags, um, sharing covers, um, uh, going. Uh, one of the things that helped me actually, which it, it was like a, a fluke at the time, but um, when I'm rehearsing for shows, if I'm with like a, a shout out to Reggie, my guitarist, um, if if I'm doing shows and I'm, you know, let's say recording or rehearsing with Reggie, I'll go on my IG live and um, I'll just start interacting with a few people on there and they'll see me rehearse. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm still singing, I'm still performing. They get a, sn a sneak peek of what's to come on stage, you know, so that's yeah. been another Behind good way of really... Behind the scenes peek? Kind exactly. What is IG engaging. live? Instagram, Instagram live. Instagram live, yes. okay. The Instagram. <laughs> I thought IG oh, live, live was something new and I'm just going to look what happened that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, I want to ask about uh, performing live because mm. you know this is very, this is very programmed based. You know, mm. with the uh, drums. I mean, it'd be hard, I think, to get a, a drummer to play that kind of drum beat. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. You'd have to actually almost score it out, like you would like, because it's it, even it's, then. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. How, how do you perform live? Um, well, performing live has always been like a like a really amazing thing, like a really amazing outlet for me because, you know, it's just allowing yourself to be creative in a whole nother respect. Um, performing live with a track is different than performing live with a band, obviously. Um, Did you both? Yes, I have done both. Um, I, I performed live with a full band for the first time uh, last year when I was uh, performing for the people performance that we mentioned um, as well as when I performed for Honey Jam um, it's not easy you know when you're mm -hmm. working with other people on stage mm -hmm. um, but it's actually you know once you have everything down pat it's just like such a good weight off of your shoulders because you know you're on stage with a whole bunch of professionals that know what they're doing and that are just supporting you so mm -hmm. um, when I'm performing live with a band uh, my biggest I guess the biggest things for me is, um, you know, the sound check, of course, um, making sure that you're communicating well with your band members and everything. And, and it's just been really comfortable with me just, yeah, being able to perform with a band. Um, but do you find, like, with the band, like, to Phil's point, if you're playing with, mm -hmm. you know, real drummer, real guitarist, bass player, keyboardist, whatever, does the does the vibe kind of change? Like, does it does it mold into more of a traditional R&B thing then? Or do you mm -hmm. even change the songs with a live band versus mm -hmm. when you do it with a track? Maybe um, arrangements, whatever? Sometimes. Sometimes I do, yeah. Uh, when it comes to, like, my, for instance, my performance on Honey Jam, I was only performing one song. Um, and so for that, uh, it definitely enhanced the overall performance just because i mean like hearing those live instruments opposed to hearing a track it's mm -hmm. like the energy just elevates itself you know um we didn't do too much changes to actually yeah we didn't do too many changes to the overall like song um but we definitely um i don't know how to say this right now but it's like I don't know the easiest way to say this. Like when I was in rehearsal, uh, I just showed them the song and I was like, this is what I'm working with. I don't usually work with a band. So if you guys can draw any inspiration from that, that's great. Um, and then one by one, we went through each instrument and each instrument um, like had their own take of how the song would be. And then when everything kind of came together, um, everything just came alive. So it's not like we did any like major changes to the song, except for, you know, adding little moments like solos for the, each band member. Mm -hmm. um, and even toning down the overall production of the song too, uh, because when you have these live instruments, I mean, well, it's kind of a stripped down version, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it, I it's feel been like really special. To exactly. Like to me, to me, it was a really great moment. Just like being able to perform with the band, like you feel the energy. Did, did you get the them to sing backup? Do the harmonies and things? No, no, no. no. I was <laughs> no, the only singer. I wish I had a background. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Be nice. <laughs> Do you have any uh, performance, any live shows coming up in the near future? Um, I do have one for the uh, Yay Youth Conference that's coming up at the Artscape 
at the Artscape. Um, oh gosh, why is this leaving me right now? Well, what city? It's in, in Tor- Toronto. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Artscape Toronto. Why is my and memory when? leaving? Okay, do you know when? <laughs> it is, yes. So it's on June 21st. Okay. Yes, and it's for Yay Day. It's a youth conference, oh, cool. uh, youth empowering youth. And uh, I'm going to be doing a 15 minute set of just a lot of uh, some covers, and it's just going to be stripped down acoustic. Stripped down acoustic is my favorite kind of set. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, is it? Okay. What, what, what do you do for stripped down acoustic? Acoustic guitar and you, and that's it? Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah either uh, piano or like keyboard or uh, me and a guitarist. Um, I mean, I just really like to, to feel free on stage. So, mm-hmm. um, when I'm singing uh, like an acoustic set, I like to kind of go wild with my songs while still maintaining like a, a pretty simple, like steady um, instrumentation. That's that's my R&B side coming out because I just right. like to you know do those runs and yeah. you know switch up the melody a little bit. If I want to go minor a little bit in a song, then I have the freedom to do that with an acoustic set. Cool. All right. All right. Should well, we, we hear uh, put, put yeah. you on? Say, so more. this one, uh, your your credit is the only writer. Yes. So does that does that mean did you did you come up with some some chords and stuff like that as well for the uh, for the producer to base the beat on? So for Put You On, um, this was actually uh, produced by Trey Timeless. Uh, he's a producer based out in Toronto, and uh, we were in the studio together when he when he composed the whole song, um, and we kind of worked together in making in making the song sound the way it does. Um, it's kind of your old school R and B. Um, and uh, we wrote it in the same day. This was written and recorded in uh, in Ottawa at Audio Valley Studios. And he covered the production part of it, and I covered the songwriting part of it. So this is kind of an Ottawa vibe, you're saying? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> hey, it's a world vibe. <laughs> oh, so this is the Ottawa sound. <laughs> it's got that federal feel to it. <laughs> right. All right, let's take a listen. I'ma put you on to something right If you like, yeah Is that alright? Mm-hmm. Ready, let it up, no rush, slow motion, baby If you like, yeah Is that alright? Is that alright? Mm-hmm. Baby, hold up. hold up Stress on the shoulders, hold up Get down, but we grown-ups, roll up What's the hold up? Yeah, we be on the way. If we got two vase and that's tray, you're so comfortable in your space. Take, Take me, me higher. The mm-hmm. best believe I wanna hear about it. Slide it up and get your worries out of here. Uh, I'm about to slow it down. Baby, take me now. If you ain't ready, so let it out of here. Boy, I really don't care. Like, have you around? Baby, take me now. Baby, I'ma put you on to something right. You uh, feel like, yeah. Is that alright? Uh, ready, let it up. No rush. The lights go off Sweaters and t-shirts take it all I know I'll make it worth it all I know I'll make it worth it all I shouldn't pass it, baby, no Tell me you're feeling bad now I know I'll make it worth it all I know I'll make it worth it all Baby, I'ma put you on to something right
Okay, that was Put You On by Kelsey Vaz. All right. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Groovy. Yeah. I, I, again, you, you, got that, you got that same sort of thing going where the verse is very floaty. Like, it's, it's kind of loose, and you can mm-hmm. play around with it, and you can do a little run here. Take me higher, higher. You kind of yeah. float it around there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, then, but then the hook really grounds it again. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, back in the day, we used to listen to like a lot of like honestly uh, a lot of like Chris Brown mu- uh, music and um, just like a lot of old school R and B, and that was pretty much a consistent thing. Like there'd be a really really strong hook, and then the verses would just be the story. And no matter which way the story goes, you kind of just complement it with you know the musicality of the runs and the backups and all that. You ever stuff. you ever incorporate rap into your stuff? I love rapping. Yes, I yeah. have this one song called uh, "Change Directions," where I I rap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love rapping. I wish I was a rapper in another way. So, yeah. <laughs> I swear. Well, that's, that's it. When you evolve, you've got other areas to go to, you know. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Watch out for me. Exactly. <laughs> MC Kelsey. Well, it's so, interesting because the song starts off really with the chorus. I mean, you call it the hook, but it's really the chorus, mm-hmm. you know. And um, which is always something I, I've like done doing but then so many people will think that's the verse just because it comes first but even though it's really the kind of the The Beatles did it all the time yeah yeah Yeah. it works out really well Um, because it it brought back memories of Chardet for me you know Mm, has some of that sort of bit of feel I mean the sort of the broken beats are a bit more you know a bit more over there the bridge was kind of interesting because the bridge so often with a bridge you'll kind of make it sort of a fairly large change so like it might be a minor if you're in a major key um you know it might be very, kind of like a big step but the bridge actually almost kind of just sort of morphs back into the chorus which i thought was an interesting approach which part are you calling the bridge um well the part before the last chorus came in okay the better make sure the lights yeah. go oh, okay. yeah, that yeah. one's actually yeah, that was a, really uh, a verse so is that a verse yeah there's okay. no bridge in this one i ended up just um yeah, no, just com- well, finishing so it's off like half notes. a verse. It's like half. But again, you're you're much more looser in the verse. Like it can can be short, it could be long. The melody's mm-hmm. not going to be exactly the same. Yeah. The underpinning, the beat is the same. Yes. Right. So it's it sounded not, like the chords were different. Did it? Um, I think the uh, the melody was different. Yeah. It, but I believe the chords were were the same for the for that second verse. No. Oh, okay. That's There's a repeat listening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to listen to it again. <laughs> well, because the verses are, are you know fairly long, actually. I mean, there's, I mean, it's like it's it's chorus, verse, chorus, first chorus, I guess, basically. Mm-hmm, exactly. But um, I mean, the verses are quite long. There's like lots to them, and um, you know, it's not just like four lines for the chorus and then like you know four eight lines for the for the verse. It's really, it's almost kind of free flowing. Yep. But um, although um, it seemed like you had more um, closer rhymes uh, in this one than in the last one, I think. Yes. Yeah, I think there's more perfect um, rhymes in this. Song. Yeah. Yeah. Which I thought was was sort of interesting. I mean, I think. It, mm. I mean, it's an interesting question about you know we always talk about how you know perfect rhymes versus not doing rhymes at all, how it changes the the feel of a or somewhere in between song, you know. Um, I kind of like the the perfect rhymes. I think with you know because the verse is so flea fo- f- <laughs> um, free flowing, free flowing, free flowing. Yeah. Yes. that when you don't have the verses, it almost sounds like it's almost just this kind of random consciousness kind of thing. Yeah. Whereas when you have um, some some rhymes, it kind of gives it a bit of structure, even mm-hmm. though yeah. melodically it's not like a structure. I mean, it would be a hard song to whistle, for instance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you if know. you had the perfect rhymes and your melody shape was exactly the same on every line, then it would come across much more like a pop song. Like a pop song. Yes, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, Put You On is more on the R&B side for sure, whereas Focus is definitely more structured to uh, just appeal to more of a pop audience. Um, I would say that when it comes to just songs that I'm more singing versus like kind of flowing on the beat, um, I like to keep my my rhymes a bit tighter and the syllables a little bit tighter so it's easier for me to sing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that also gives me uh, just something to go off of when I'm, if I'm singing it live, let's say, uh, or if I'm just trying to, you know, freestyle it and perform it in a different creative way, then, you know, having lyrics like that that are a bit more structured helps me with performance. So when you perform this with a band, is are all the cues like right on or, or can you can you do some do some runs on something mm. and the band just sort of anticipates and, and they know the next part is coming up or like do you do you flex while you're playing live or is it all kind of pinned down the way it's supposed to be? Um, we 
usually like to pin it down at first, uh, and then look for rooms, uh, rooms. Well, <laughs> we look for a room. Uh, just so that we can play around with too because for my live sets I like to be interesting with it um, obviously it's 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 a live set so I like it to be almost like there there's an incentive for the audience to come see me live so when mm. I'm performing live I like to you know go off a bit I haven't performed uh, put you on with a band before mm. um, I performed circles which is coming out soon with a band and again we locked it in got everything down pat and then that was when I'm like actually guys I want to have a moment in this section like let's make some room okay. for that but even the moments are planned there's, there's, there's no uh, improv on stage is that correct it I like to plan certain moments um, mm. but there is some elements of improvisation when I'm on stage let's say when I'm first in- introducing the song I like to improvise that um, when uh, when it comes to the ending I like to improvise that sometimes but I like to set myself up with with a little I guess time slots I guess mm. of moments that I can like okay this is where I'm gonna do this cool now I can improvise when I'm there right you, you improvise the in between so like that. you know like yeah, did yeah. you have oh okay here's eight bars for me to do something is it like that or is it more free where you just kind of do your thing and then cue the band um no I'm not at the stage yet when I'm performing where I can just cue the band like all right let's uh, repeat that one more time I'm yeah. just gonna do this you know like I'm not at that stage just yet when it comes to live performance with the band um, so again I just like to figure out the template let's see where we can fit those moments and then when I'm on stage I can just go attack those moments when it's time right right because sometimes you're you're on and, and sometimes you're not exactly. so what is your opinion there's lots of different opinions about this about when they see somebody oh. live mm-hmm. some people want to hear the record exactly the way it is live and other people want it to be completely different like a totally different experience mm-hmm. what where do you f- sit on that um i mean i'm biased to the artist side because to me i think if you're gonna go see an artist you want to see the artist like full scope like 360 mm-hmm. um who are they and what's the song they're trying to sing so i actually don't want to hear artists have a track unless you're like doing some next level crumping on stage that you really right. can't have the breath control for that yeah. like i i it blows me away when i see artists that are like dancing and singing live you know because then it's just like a full show right yeah. i'm not a fan of artists that sing with track but I mean I understand it too you know you gotta do what you gotta do for the show and as long as you kind of overcompensate with your performance then that's cool mm. um, if people want to pay money to go see a song perform the exact way it was recorded I mean that's on you but it's not always going to be the case and that's yeah. probably not going to yeah. be the yeah, case it, sounds, it sounds like you, you favor like the acoustic thing or do it with a band or like and, and of course it's going to be a different creature then right? it's going to yeah, sound different exactly mm. I really value the authenticity of like the moment you create when you're with the audience you know because everything's different every show is different that you have with an artist so you know like for me i i usually like to like plan my sets but i like to also get a feeling of the crowd like when i first start some of my shows i'd be like what are you guys down for like are you guys down for listening to some pop right now or do you want to like slow it down with some r&b like let me know and then if they really if they're down for r&b it's like okay cool like let me give you a really good r&b performance and then i'll run around with it with my voice and like really like you know get intentional with the way i perform it and everything and you know if they're down for a pop then i'll hype up the energy you know what i mean get people involved and stuff like sing along focus folk, you know what i mean so it's just a different vibe but i like to switch it up according to the audience so that's why mm. i don't think that you should have really like a like a cookie cutter way of of doing things just because maybe that's what your audience is looking for like i think an artist should be an artist when they're performing to their audience i mean they're there to see them and if there's only one way to do a song i don't know that doesn't say much about how good the song is the song should yeah. be able to be stretched mm. and Let's yeah, do it this way. Let's but slow it down. Let's speed it up. Let's try it. But sometimes, you know, when exactly. I've um, and this is more for s- more structured songs um, that you know, especially people who have you know they have had a, had a hit and they've played you know they sang the song one thousand times and yeah. they get a bit bored and they start playing with the melody and they start playing with it so much that it actually become it loses that fundamental thing that makes the music the song great. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's because they're bored and I understand that, well, but you're still going. Come on, I mean, like it's it's a hard line to, you know, where to bend it before you yeah. break it. Yeah, you know, 100%. true that. I mean, I've heard, I've heard artists that switch up their songs, but it's 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 kind of fresh and interesting. It's not yeah. necessarily 
tiresome. Yeah. You know, so it really depends on the artist how they handle it. Because yeah. you, you can change up a song and it's and it's and it becomes something fresh and but it still it maintains the integrity. Sometimes the heart of the song is still work. That's, that's true. And speaking of songs, we hear that familiar song right now. All right. Oh, snap. Uh, shall we do the surprise left. first? Let's yes. do the surprise okay. first. Okay. <laughs> so if you want to win uh, two tickets to the uh, advanced screening of Rocket Man, send us an email at this very special email uh, address. Rocketman at songtalk.ca. That's Rocketman, R O C K E T M A N, at songtalk.ca. This will be good until the next next Tuesday. Yep. Send us. You don't have to put anything. You have to put something in the in the uh, subject, but it doesn't have to be anything. Say something nice. Say, say something, something nice. nice. Say something mean. Yeah. Say something <laughs> nice about Just Kelsey. say <laughs> something. Yes. <laughs> and um, we will pick. Um, we'll pick up some. Uh, some winners and voice some posters and other good stuff. Awesome. Cool. So we'll okay. announce that uh, next week's show. On next one, Tuesday. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, and that is all the time we have tonight on Song Talk Radio. Special thanks to our guest, Kelsey Vaz. Thank you. Yay. How can our listeners you, hear more of your music? You can find me on Spotify, Apple Music, all of them. Just all of them. Look up Kelsey Vaz and you will find my songs. Send me a message. Let me know if you like it. I'm always open to some feedback. How do you spell it? K E L S E Y V A Z or Z. Z. <laughs> okay. And send us your impressions via Twitter at Song Talk Radio, email feedback at songtalk.ca, Facebook and YouTube Song Talk Radio. Stop by the good old website songtalk.ca. Subscribe today to the Song Talk Radio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher.com, Spotify, Podcast Addict, probably many others. And don't forget to sign up for our free newsletter at songtalk.ca. Find links to all the products, books, and web services we mentioned on our show and our resources page. And if you're in the Toronto area, definitely join us at our next songwriters meetup. It's this Sunday, uh, May the 26th from 1 to 4 p.m. And we're going to be giving away Rocket Man stuff there, too. So hold out for that. Uh, that's at the Transact Club. It's free to join on meetup.com and free to attend the meetup. Stop by our website, songtug.ca, for the link. Who's hosting that? I'm hosting that. Woo-hoo. And uh, thanks to uh, Rita handling our social Thank media you, tonight. Thank you, Rita. And on the tech board thingy, Mr. Micah. Thank you. And most of all, we'd like to thank you, our devoted listener. You can follow me, neilmodi.com. You can follow Phil. At the Phil Emery on Twitter. You can follow Michael if he's nah, nah, no, no, not I yet. give you people enough on the show. You can follow Micah. <laughs> at Jimmy Micah on Instagram. Jimmy Micah on Instagram. And Rita. Still up. Yeah. Still up in the air. <laughs> under, <laughs> under, under construction. Un, under construction, yeah. under yeah. renovations. Uh, and of course, our guest, Kelsey Vaz. What's, what's, your, what's your central social media handle? Uh, Instagram, Kelsey Vaz. And Twitter, Kelsey Vaz Music. Works for me. And stop by the website, songtalk.ca. Browse past shows and find out how you can be a guest. Keep on writing, everybody. Good night, Good night. everyone. Woo. Bye.